I'm calling this meeting to order. Um, Alan has sent his April 19th minutes. Um, could I ask for a motion to approve? So move. <laughs> second. I'll second it if she moved it. Okay. Are there any, uh, is there any discussion? Are there any corrections? I did add that line about postponement of the hidden history. Okay. Room. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good. Um, the town center pump house site plan, I was just starting to say, because Judy had asked me, although Wayne answered me very happily 12 days ago when I wrote to say we were meeting today and you know, that we couldn't <laughs> offer a judgment without an elevation or at least a description of the exterior of the pump house. Um, he hasn't sent me anything. I reminded him again on Thursday. Um, I think Judy, you're probably right that that means he hasn't gotten anything. But since what we care about is the appearance, um, we might care about other things, but since what we care about as an historical commission is the appearance and, and the scale, I think, um, I think we have two choices. The ZBA is considering it on Thursday. And Judy, what is the latest planning board date? 2025. So we can, um, it seems to me, I mean, this, this is a proposal, what I'm about to say. We can write to Roger and Don and say, we will, uh, we would like to comment on the design for the pump house. Um, we can't do it now because we haven't been, we haven't seen anything. But what it'll look like, obviously, I'm paraphrasing, um, and we'll be back to you later. Or we can. I don't really want to meet again in May. <laughs> so I'm feeling cranky about meetings. I don't want to have extra meetings. <laughs> uh, what? What? How would you like to proceed? We could say, yeah, we're looking for something that seems appropriate in scale and appearance to other things in the area, but. I how much can we actually see from any road nearby? I, I don't want to leave appropriate design and in, scale up to the water guys. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Sorry, uh, I just don't. In, in winter, you'll be able to clearly see it from, from the triangle there. The dingle? Well, depending on what the planning triangle. board requires for screening. I mean, the yeah. planning board has the option to screen. And so... I, I I just heard this is not our concern, and I don't know, and I couldn't repeat the details if I wished to, but that the cemetery commissioners have a sort of functional concerns about the location. Um, so there will be some more discussion. Um, should we write something now and say, you know, we, we will we'll want to write again after we meet in June with a design to look at? Or not. There's there's significant pressure from the town to get this done, and the his, the planning board has already held it up two weeks with this email oh. snafu on the posting. Well, what so, can we do? Um, well, one solution is to meet again. Another is to sit in on the planning board meeting. Um, a third is yours. I mean, they would approve it conditional on, planning board can approve it conditional on the historical commission's approval. And I apologize. I, it might be helpful if, if you wrote sort of general, if we wrote general guidelines of what we think would be helpful to see. And that way, if they're not there, the planning board could ask for them. Do you mean that we would like the architect's plan, including an, an elevation, a drawing? Is that what you mean? Well, no, I was thinking more about what the way Alan put it about in keeping with with the neighborhood and materials. Yeah. You know, no. Well, that's and that's the letter that we sent in 2017. Um, I mean, we didn't go to far as so far as to say we'd like it built of clabbered or, you know, you can use cement board if you really want to, but you yeah. can't use, you know, vinyl siding. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, we can't say you can or you can't, but it, 
Is that what you're talking about, materials? Yeah, yeah. I think you could say that vinyl siding would not be appropriate for the historic district. We said it about the well, fence. It's, uh, it's not really in the district, so. Well, since there's no actual drawing for the district, it could be in the district. No. Um, what else? It can be besides... seen from the. It's, it can be seen from the district. Yeah, but the cemetery is. Yeah, that's what in I meant. The district. That's I mean, what I meant. Yeah. What else besides materials? What else have we got? Do we care whether the access road is paved or not? Uh, do you mean, do we want to say we don't want to see an asphalt driveway going into the, how, I asked if we care, you know, it's, it's, uh, does it matter to us? Not sure it makes an awful lot of difference whether it's paved or not, does it? Um, what? It's not going to be a speedway of any kind. There's going to be a gate in front of it, I presume, like, like there is now. Is that right? No, I mean, it would make a difference to people who visit their family plots in the cemetery to be looking at a mass of asphalt instead of a grass and gravel lane, which is the effect of what they have now, I think. I mean, it, it would certainly change the character of this. I don't know how much time you've spent walking back into the cemetery, but it would change the character mm -hmm. to have a fully paved road. The other thing is... is yeah. Alan mentioned the gate. Um, we might comment on what that ought to look like. Or not. <laughs> not look like, maybe. Um, well, could we, if, if this is the kind of letter that we want to write, could we stay with the paving till we have an opinion? I mean, what do other people think? That's kind of what I'm wondering is how far can we go with this until we know more? Uh, I actually, I think, um, is the driveway, I, I hadn't actually thought about the driveway part, is that not included in the plans that we have? It's included in the plans and the plans call for paving up to the access from the cemetery, but Wayne said at the planning board meeting that they were not planning to do that. Well, how, can, plans, we, how can we offer show opinion? Itself. Right, but how? A large part of their plans are going to be motivated by cost. I mean, if it costs too much, I don't know. They have a limited amount of money to spend, I think. Don't they? Seems so unnecessary, too, doesn't it? Paving? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. It depends on what they want to bring in there. I don't know. Well, they're paving to a dirt road. Um, I found those earlier today and it's, it's not on the pages that I, it shows. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't have the attachment, the whole attachment, but I do have a map that shows by what they call a bituminous apron that. Bituminous means asphalt. <laughs> By, oh, by two okay. minutes is they asphalt. Sound, <laughs> yes. They make it sound so fancy. Yes. <laughs> that goes, well, I don't know if you can see it. Probably. Can you see that? No. Yeah, it's fair to, I was afraid of that. I mean, it's, it's thank you for it your good intentions. Slightly, it goes slightly, it goes, I don't have a scale. It goes today. past the goes past the entrance to the to the site itself presumably so that somebody can drive in and then back out back out to to the west and then drive back out to the east here I found them um, and that's on the that's on the uh, the the maps as opposed to the narrative yeah well I, 
Dobra. See, Wayne will be sorry. We wouldn't be talking about the paving if you'd sent us what we wanted to see about the building. <laughs> <laughs> it's plan sheet C2. This lane will be improved when it says on page. Oh, it is in the narrative. Two of the narrative, the top, top sentence, this lane will be improved to an eight foot wide by two minutes drive up to the pump station building. C plan sheet C2. Um, which might be, Donna, it might be up on the planning it's board. It's this. <laughs> and then the next, next page. Well, this is marked LC2. Yeah. So it's, you know. Well, it's easier to see. Um, on what? On the, on, on line? There's one with... Without the shading in back. Yeah. You mean this? Yeah. But as I said, Wayne said that they weren't planning to do that, which came as a shock to the engineer. Um, but I think we could say something to the effect if we believe it, that we think if they did feel it was possible to leave it as gravel or as much of it gravel as possible, mm -hmm. that would be good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel sort of bad. I mean, Neil says he knows this engineer well from the big library building he built over in Hatfield and some other projects he worked on and he's a good guy, but you know, it's, you're, sadly typically town way of doing business instead of gathering people who have an interest you know for at least one conversation um <laughs> pay to have work done and then do it again <laughs> no. which is you know a lot of organizations are like that um oh chris oh, chamberlain uh, wrote the letter uh, pardon me chris chamberlain is outstanding he's 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 very good the person who was there was a was a woman um, I think um, given <laughs> the ongoing concerns about lighting in town center, most of the lighting is from municipal properties and buildings, that we should say something about no lighting or nothing but motion activated lighting. So is, are, are you all okay with that? I'm looking at the plan here. They say something about lighting somewhere here. No glare or light reflection anticipated. Minimum lighting required by the building code will be installed with shielding to prevent light spill over the property line. That sounds excellent. I'm on page two of the site plan. I see it. Okay. I see it. Point 0.5 under environmental performance standards. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think having us reiterated is a good idea, you know, in, in our lay person's language. Um, yeah, and we haven't, okay. So thank you. I think the way we're, we'll have to do this, um, which we've done with some other, uh, projects, if you're all amenable, is that I will draft something. Um, I'll try to do that first thing tomorrow morning and then send your individual constructive criticisms. Okay. And I'll, I'll, I should send it by Wednesday so that since the ZBA is meeting on a Thursday night. And I'll, I'll write to Wayne, Roger and Don. Um, is that okay? Sounds okay to me. Yeah, okay. Um, Allison, do you need to recuse yourself? Are, well, we're not voting on anything, are we? 
was thinking about the letter comments. Oh, I won't. I won't make any comments. You, you guys, you guys are all on the right track. I don't need to officially comment on anything. Okay. That sounds good. Um, Judy, do you think we need to be prepared to meet again before May? Sorry, what is it? May what? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm out of town that week, so I'm not going to a planning board meeting. I don't think so. Um, Sarah I mean, Cooper asked at the last been... meeting if it was stick stick construction or or not, and he said stick, which I assume meant not metal. <laughs> but or concrete. Or concrete. Not cinder block, right. Yeah. yeah. And he was talking about color of the shingles, so so presumably sing shingles and not corrugated metal. You could ask them to make it in the shape of a giant milk bottle. That would be something. <laughs> Tell them you're very interested in that. Yes. <laughs> as long as I don't have to help lift the thing again. <laughs> that thing is heavy. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. It'd be funny, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, it would. <laughs> have the twin towers. And our, our milk bottle was better than the other milk bottle, wasn't it? Totally. But I'm talking about the giant I mean, one. Only because Allison designed it, you know? <laughs> I'm talking about the one um, that's already, the giant one that's already installed at school. We need a twin one to that. <laughs> the water pump house. Yeah. I don't know. Why I don't... not? If we're going to build something. Why not make it a, you know, another town? We can make it 30, 30 feet tall. Um, I, I, I think it. I think the milk bottle would not be enough to hold the pumps. I think that's yeah, <laughs> make it look like it's make it look like a tobacco, like a tobacco, like a tobacco barn. Like a tobacco barn. <laughs> yeah. Well, that would be good if the pumps have to be aerated. You know, it's very easy. <laughs> to, it's very easy to ventilate a tobacco barn. Well, there's all kinds of vessels we could emulate. <laughs> This is being recorded. <laughs> and, and I know of one town uh, resident who watches uh, nearly every committee member, committee meeting, I think. All right. Um, I certainly hear his comments. Well, they can't say we're not exploring all sorts of ideas. That's true. That's true. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm not taking great notes, so um, I, I really will be very, <laughs> very much welcome your constructive um revisions to this letter. Uh, thanks. Um, so paleoarchaeological sites, another strikeout, as we say. Um, I wrote to Peter Stott, uh, the Mass Historical Commission, um, right. a week ago. Um, actually, I, I, I took a slightly passive aggressive um, approach in that I forwarded him his note from 2018 where he says he would get back to me in a week or two. <laughs> <laughs> well, people do that all the time. I don't actually usually do that, but I did. Um, Who was it? I'm sorry, I this is the guy. His the title? What is his title? I don't where know. Is he? He's, He's the one who's in charge of the inventories and the um, various forms. Yeah, he's in charge of the MACRIS, the cultural, and, and actually, oh. I'll look it up for you. Okay, okay. okay. Um, actually, if Betsy Friedberg is still there, she was the one who was in charge of all the National Registers. Things. And the message that I, from 2018, actually said, I will consult with Betsy Friedberg, and we will get back to you in a week or two. <laughs> so, um, so, I mean, this, this is on the uh, agenda because Allison asked me, um, you know, what are we allowed to say or do or report about the known paleoarchaeological sites in town? Is that a fair? Well, what are we allowed to, or, or what do we want to reveal? You know, there's, that's two mm -hmm. different things. We may be allowed to do more than we actually want to reveal. Right. I don't know. And, I, I, okay. Um, and I, I would like to hear, especially Alan, but also Susan and Judy talk about that a bit. Um, Most of the archeological sites are not 
at least anything that's recorded with MHC is not generally public information. And you, you don't release it um, without some sort of official letter to MHC and they need to make public, I think. And the, and the way that we got into this exchange with Peter is that he somehow realized that the uh, full entry for the West Whateley National District, National Historic District was posted on the on our website mm -hmm. and including stuff about the um, Native American sites and wrote and said that has to come down and and you can post it again but we'll have to do the redaction and then it just fell off the you know just fell off the page. Are we asking this question again now in terms of this hidden history project or just sort of general knowledge, just general procedure? Uh, we're asking it because you asked me something about yeah, it. Yeah, well, but, but I was asking. You know, I, I don't, think, think, I don't we're... think I don't think we're asking because of the hidden history project. Okay. Yeah. I think I that's mean, how we, we could that's be. Like we could be, but I don't think we are. <laughs> well, it's a good example of how that might be come into question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, paleo paleo sites are at least ten thousand years old, so it's not. I think she means prehistoric. Maybe so, but I think that's what Donna means. Tell me the difference. I'm, I'm, I, you know, my world began in the eighteenth century, so tell me about this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in in seventeen thirty-two, when my artist was born. So. Paleo. <laughs> Paleoarchaeological in, in archaeological terms in archaeo speak is anything that's really, really old around here. The first original settlements that we know about, which is something like 10,000 years, about the time the glacial lake drained. Okay. Everything after that is, um, is archaic stuff, or there's a woodland period, stuff with pottery and, and agriculture and the like. Archaic is hunter gatherers by and large, and that's a Right. Probably an overstatement, but that's about right. And then what does prehistoric mean? Which I didn't say. <laughs> so what does uh, that mean? It, it generally, I, uh, uh, it, it depends on what culture you're talking about sometimes, but it has to do with uh, before the, the, the era of recorded history in terms of writing or visual recording. Right. So it, it means what it, what it that has could meant, mean. What it has meant. To, Yes, here in Waitley. Yeah, that's pre-European contact, unless you're counting some Vikings that might have wandered through. Right, <laughs> right. Is right. that right, Alan? That's about right. Yeah, I've yeah. I've seen the Viking data, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it's not recorded, so it's prehistoric. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Unless somebody recorded it in the saga, but yeah, you know, a different story. So, so that could mean Donna. That could mean uh, 1500. You know what I mean? But that would not be. You would not call that paleo. Right, right. Yeah, it's prehistoric, and you wouldn't and you wouldn't call it prehistoric because it's you know. Well. Here it is. Because in Europe, it's the it Renaissance. Be it's you know, pretty far along. No, but for Waitley, Waitley it's yeah. prehistoric. That's what I mean. Yeah. It's a flexible yeah, term. Yeah, I understand. No, I understand. Um, I do. Or um, in China, you know. Right, right, right. Or Egypt. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the Granby work in Deerfield. Gramley, Gramley excuse Gramley. me. Um, how much... How how much has that work revealed about what he found or studied? I don't well, know. He's I published. Any of it. He's published the maps. He's shown so, a picture of the dig next to the to Sanderson's right. tobacco barn. Right. But I so, think <laughs> I think that they believe they have pulled out most of the artifacts there. Possibly. Granley has always been a proponent of open access. So, which so the, also, water with go ahead. Local. The main part of that site is, is the Dedic site that's under the conservation restriction and it and is in Deerfield. Yeah, it's under a park. Right. Basically. 
<laughs> so the the um, prohibition. Oh, there's some. There's some in Whateley. I take that back. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah. There's some in Whateley, but it. So the prohibition against publishing is a state historical co commission prohibition. It's not a so. federal prohibition, and it's not even. It doesn't even apply to any work done in the state of Massachusetts. Apparently, is that. Um, I think it probably, I think the Historical Commission can only prohibit it in their publications. The State Historical Commission, not us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, I'm just, just uh, wanting to be sure it's, that we're all on the same page. Well, there's it's, also probably issues about private land ownership, too, that come up when you're discussing this. Mm -hmm. Because that can be a layer of restriction that overarches right. governmental restriction. Right, right. Yeah, if there's no but, federal or state money involved, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, you can do almost anything you want if it's on your and, land. And as, as Alan said, there's a archeological convention that you don't necessarily advertise these things. No. Right, because Although it's Gramley, Gramley feels that it's, he really, he takes the position that the people who have the right to dig are not digging and they're not allowing the public to benefit from the history that's there. Well, that's and really he, why he I was basically asking because- is trying to, He's right. trying, I think, to, to do everything he can to encourage them to go out and dig. Oh. Well, to dig and then preserve, I think, and protect. Oh, yeah. She means yeah. professional yeah. people to yeah. go out and yeah. Yeah. Not, not, not to mean, dig I mean, and then sell it, you know. I mean, archaeology. Tag sales. Oh, 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 I thought you meant just people with no, a shovel. No, no, no. No, 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 no but no. there's plenty of those people out there. Oh, yeah. Yes, there are. Yes, there are. This um, is what I worry. Did you, did you all read about the, um, this was in Connecticut, it let, just a couple of months ago, the people who put out a little blue and white um, bowl that, you know, Grammy had had at a tag sale and sold it for 25 bucks. And it's a Ming, it's from the Ming era <laughs> and it's sold immediately again for $350,000. Hmm. Hmm. That's an antiques roadshow story. Yeah. It's yeah. a true story. It's a true story though. I mean, it's, you know, it's, uh, I, we've seen- Well, I think this is an interesting topic and I think it could you know I, I think there's degrees to which we can apply all of this control but for the hidden history project for example I think we could consider putting pins in maps just sort of generally let's say on the summit of Dry Hill and Waitley to say that this area you know is known to have had woodland settlements circa you know, put a date on it without giving somebody's address or an exact location. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that, that has historical benefit for people to know that there is evidence there of that kind of thing or down in the, you know, the valley. Right. All of that. Right. And, and the reason I was asking about Gramley, whose name yeah. I um, now will not forget, was that I had read that article and it seemed to me so, just what you said, Judy, just um, to be approaching the topic from quite a different point of view mm -hmm. in terms of um, public education. And well, I should say that he is a, he last year, last winter I talked to him and asked if he would be willing to come and speak to the, his, as part of the Historical Society or Oral History Series. And he said he would then, I haven't circled back. Mm -hmm. That would be but, great. But I that think would be great. I think the Historical Society is planning to ask him and well, also Peter Tom Thompson Thomas. Thomas Peter Thomas. Thomas yeah. To come. Well, wait till we can use town hall again. Because we'll have an Don't audience worry. for that. Yeah. Don't yeah, we'll worry. have an audience for that. Um you never have to worry about the historical society rushing into anything. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, you had a city blocks worth of floats. <laughs> um, so, um, so Allison, that does not answer your question 
in any kind of definitive way, but does it, should I be pushing as much as you can push the Massachusetts Historical Commission, which is like, you know, putting your thumb in some marshmallow material that has no food value. Um, should I be continuing to press him on this or should we just move on, rise above it? In one sense, it's kind of an unanswerable question for him. I think it would be more answerable, don't you, if you had a specific use you yeah. were considering? Um, yeah. yeah. And a reason yeah. why you want to reveal whatever it is you want to reveal? Right, right. Um, that makes sense. Okay, well, I will leave him alone. I'll focus on Wayne instead. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, okay, that sounds good. Um, so um, there was something else I was going to tell you all, and I have just lost it. Oh, oh, about Macris, sorry, about the cultural register. Um, when, when we all were working on the uh, workshop that we did, what, three years ago, um, several people in town, uh, Nancy Tulanian was one of them, who looked up the entries on their houses said, you know, what's in Macris about my house is all wrong. Those people didn't live in my house. I mean, not just what is quite distressing to me that every one of those entries is just a mess of misspellings and bad grammar and just, they're just bad stuff, badly done, but, but wrong, inaccurate. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I, uh, Derek Smith, as, as some of you may know, is working on house histories. Um, she's not so much interested in the architecture of the house. She's interested in the history of the, the residence. And I sent her uh, the entry on, on our house that I had um, added to. Um, I'd added to the macro stuff and then Peter Stott had reformatted it for me and made some suggestions. And like many things in my life, it got parked on the desks, two desks behind me and you know, I didn't do anything, I didn't finish it. So I sent it to her and she wrote back to me and said, well, here are two very specific things that are wrong. And they were wrong from the macro century. It wasn't stuff that I had done. They were wrong from the work in 90, 1993. I, um, I wondered, that work was done with a grant. Um, I mean, that woman got paid <laughs> who did it, you know, it's hundreds of entries. And it made me wonder whether we should be tracking grant opportunities and considering um, applying to refresh and improve. The she, way got she, her, uh, she got her, she got her names of her history from work that the Historical Society had done for the Bicentennial. Um, it was work that Gertrude Bardwell and, and they worked with, I, I'm not entirely sure how they did it. They got people to write in what they knew and they did some deed research, but of course it was before everything was online the way it is now. Right, right, right. Derica is Derica is about Derica intends to publish this. Yeah, I know, so, which is great. Which is great. I just I, I I and I I have confidence in Derek in the accuracy of Derica's work because she's going back to original deeds and wills and you know she's going back to original sources. Um, I I guess what I'm asking is how much we, you know, do we care enough about the flawed entries that have been submitted for Waitley to try to get some money at some point to make them right? Well, it's not just flawed, it's that there are a lot of them that have changed. Right, right, of course, it's also, are, it's also nearly 30 years later, yeah. Um, you know, we've been working away at some of them a little bit. Well, you've time. done three or four and I've done three quarters of my house, but I, I don't see, yeah. I mean, this 
these five people are not volunteering to do this. I mean, may I no, speak for no. you all? It's, it's, <laughs> an enormous, you. it's an enormous amount of work. Um, well, the grants, the grants come from MHC. Right. Right. Um, so I, I would uh, wait until Derricka's house research is done. Oh, I'm moving like, you know, lava on a flat surface here. Don't worry. <laughs> no, <it's>, no. <laughs> um, I did in going back and forth with Derricka, she said in her typical way, oh, you know, making those macros, making the macros entries right for the houses I work on would be a good project. I'll do that after I do the history and she will do it. <laughs> oh, I mean, she will, cause she, she does an enormous amount of work, but yes, it would, it would make no sense to, to try to work independent of what she's doing. Um, Alice, Allison, have you looked at any of this stuff? Macro stuff? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've certainly looked at it for the farm. And and it's wrong, right? Um, not so I, wrong? Uh, I had some questions about some of it for the event barn. I guess I can't formally say it's wrong. Some of it seemed eh, squirrely to me. And, and of course now it is incomplete as, as Judy says. Right. Um, and, I, haven't, um, I haven't looked at much for other sites. To did you look at it for your own house? Your house was built in the early 20th century, right? 1921. Right. What, look at it sometime for your own house and see what you think about it. I mean, it's just easiest to have an opinion. Yeah, about I, I guess I have. I, I'll look at it with that lens. I, ha I, yeah. I will yeah. consciously look at it. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, uh, why don't I, um, I mean, anybody can do this, but why don't I, since I've started talking to Derek about it, just talk with her a little bit more about the timing of her project. And then I will have something positive to talk to Peter about, <laughs> Peter Stott, <laughs> while, while talking about the prehistoric. Well, you know, Which while you're, talk if, if you're talking to him, Donna, you know, it's not just prehistoric sites, it's any archaeological sites I think would be interesting to ask about. Right, not right. We, like not we that were I talking know about us having any, but the crafts site, for example, might be an interesting thing to consider. Right, right. Like the yeah, conversation and the, you and I were having I'm, about bar foundations yeah, yeah. of barns. Right, yeah, right. Little cellar holes up in the woods. So. Yeah. I mean, someday there may be a, a you know, an excavation of a, an historic site and you might want to have, you know, know about that. Right. Right. Beforehand. The craft site is an excellent example because the owner there is violently opposed to anyone coming on the site to. Right. Look at and that's the little house adjacent, sort of adjacent or across the street from um, the LaSalle property. Yeah, well, because he's had a parade of people down looting at the end of, of that. Yeah, it's down at the end of that road. Not, not immediately across the street, but down. So down the dead end road. Right. If you if you instead of turning left to get up to five and ten, turn right. Go uh, south. Right yeah, do south. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Is that the one it's that actually. Happened? I think some people think that that's the oldest house in town. Your next door neighbor has told me three different times that his house is the oldest house in town. I'm not kidding, three times. I, I don't. I, I, I think he's probably right, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, the Hidden History Project. Allison, you asked me to recreate what we had done, and it was painful, but I did recreate it. Well, I, I, I wasn't trying to make work for you, Donna. I was just- I No, was no, just no, 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 I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. <laughs> I was actually pleased I could find as much documentation about what he would done. And I know what I couldn't find is that, Alan, you had 
uh, you while you were chairing this group, you had received a marketing approach, or maybe it was uh, more recently than whenever you and I changed places, um, from another bad. app that was museum focused, and I had, and the Clark yeah. used it, and I talked with somebody at the Clark, okay, and I, I absolutely can't museum? find it. Museum? Museum? That no, it isn't museum because oh. that's the oh, one historic one. Deerfield is using. It's no. a different one. I'm, yeah. I'm, I just haven't found my notes. It doesn't really matter. It just, you know, I was surprised that I found most of what we've done. Um, I had it installed. You had it on your phone at one point, right? Well, it may still be here. If I can find it. Um, it's not obvious, but it's here somewhere. So while you're looking, now that Allison is with us, we we are forced to refocus on hidden history. <laughs> <laughs> so many things seem to be my fault. It's true, it's true. You know, it's, um, uh, no, that's not true. Um, and we have, Susan, how long do we have to do this now? Um, June 18th, so 13 okay. months and a few days. 13, okay, so we have a year. So- Uniguide is what- Uniguide. Okay. All sorts of things, tours and stories, and I'm not sure what all else. Yeah, I, I think I talked to somebody, and it was just it was too much money. But I now that you you've given me the name, I can search around a little bit for my notes. So maybe we should talk about the architecture first, because I think once we start doing the content, the content is going to be the easier part. I mean, for example, on the gin distillery. Judy, for the kind of thing we're talking about, using the, para, the, the material in the paragraph you wrote for your, um, which I have in front of me, and a couple of images, you know, it's probably enough for this. We're not talking about writing a dissertation about each project. Um, but the, archi the architecture, I think the question is, will it be enough to do something like a Google map with pins and links to audio, to images and audio clips, or do we need something more elaborate? And I don't know. I don't know. I don't either. I have a map. <laughs> <laughs> It could be added. I think to, to begin something. with, you want to keep it fairly simple. And if right. if there's interest, you can either add other layers that link things, like I was trying to push at the beginning. Yes, but you, or you, you can we, add. We were all terrified. We were we were terrified by your layers. <laughs> you were right, but what you know? <laughs> so. Or or you can add greater depths, but you know, remember that. The teenagers all thought they ought to have a paper map. So yeah, that's not, really not to the exclusion of something digital. No, no. Not so to the exclusion to, of something digital. Yeah. It has to have, it has to be adaptable both ways somehow. And and the more in depth you go, the less, the less that's true. And people really don't have very long attention spans. No, and I would say that, that you're talking about two different things. So uh, you could think of the paper map as being an adaptation of the digital version, or you can think of the paper map as having its own features and benefits. No, so I didn't it's a mean twin that. thing as opposed to a subservient thing. Yes, yes, I'm sorry, I didn't mean. And things you can show on a paper map that, that are less successful with the digital version. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So it, I guess the other question is, is this something we can manage 
among us <laughs> or do we need to engage some additional help and if so who or what kind of person someone is going to talk to cal uh cal uh, um she's either project right cala jones so cala um i was looking at cala's project again this weekend and it's pretty simple um but it was designed by a friend of her, a fa the father of a friend of hers who is a web designer by profession who did it, you know, for free yeah. for Kala. Um, and I don't know whether, I, you know, I don't know who to know. I don't know who to ask. <laughs> um, well, are you creating a website specifically for this project or would this live on the historical society website uh, how what are you thinking here because there's two ways to do it one is through an app and and one is to have it be part of a website seems to me right and i i know what the words mean that you just i, I understand what you just said but i have no idea what effort you know what oh, effort well, is required you, to achieve you can like it you can like it either either you build your own car from scratch hand tooling every wing nut and you know wire or you buy the kit from ford and you're just you know screwing the body onto the chassis kind of thing that it's that the app solution seems much more complicated and expensive than hosting it on the website where you're where you're taking advantage of platforms like google that are already built into yeah. System. Yeah. Yeah. And and could we do that? It wouldn't be the historical society because it's not well, a historical. I, you don't have your the, own, right? Well, we have a we have a histor an historical commission page. On the oh, that's true. Website. You have the okay. Yes, I always forget about that. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm we, not and sure. Put, I'm not sure how flexible a town website is for that kind of thing. You certainly could. You know, you. I'm the I'm the webmaster for the historical society. And, it certainly could have it there, but well, I don't for, know. You know, the town, doesn't the town website contain the assessor's map, for example? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, there's yeah. an example of an yeah. interactive yeah. map yeah. Where, yeah. where you're clicking over properties and finding right. out right. ownership. And we've all done that, right? Yeah. This is essentially the same kind of deal. They, right. They're using some kind of software yeah. that they're adapting. Although, um, to stick with that for a second, um, I have found that I am often reach a roadblock when I'm trying to do that on my iPad, and I have to go to the computer to really get to all the pop-ups and, and whatnot. And, and I, I don't think that's just me because I, you know, I know the difference. <laughs> I do a lot of things on the iPad. Yeah. Um, Judy, have you tried it on both or you, do you do it just on the computer? I usually do it just on the computer. Um, yeah, maybe give it a shot sometime because I would love to okay. be told that it's just me. You know, but that's Maybe that it's a clunky, outdated app that wasn't any good to start with. You know, we don't know. Right, 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 right. Well, and it's sold not... to all municipal, it's a standard software for municipalities. Deerfields right. is identical and right. some it, other- That's what I was going to say. It's not something that somebody here uh, designed. No, it's, it's, it's a lake. It's, it's the same statewide, maybe even bro more broadly. Is that C A C A I? Maybe. I think that's. I think that's the acronym. Some of it came um, from macros too. I thought, but. Uh, pardon me. Some of it came from the macros site, not the historical commission part of it, but the. Uh, there is a state. Uh, geographic system, geographic information system. Which I think this uh, thing is part of. I'm not sure about that. But. Well, the state GIS system has, I mean, they have layers. <laughs> you know? yes, I mean, I, I don't know if anybody's ever seen layers. Scott Jackson, you know. Oh, yeah, it's crazy. Back, I mean, yeah, no, we crazy. cannot do that. <laughs> and well, to answer your question, though, Donna, should, should you be looking for help? I, I can't see how that would hurt. And it but, seems like nobody, yeah. nobody in this group, you know, considers himself a web designer or, mm -hmm. you know, an app designer. And the question is where you find that person and, and what do they cost? Well, one thing that I could do 
having having resurrected these notes and, and reminded myself that one of the reasons we stopped pursuing it was that just as we were starting to talk about the architecture, the pandemic hit, I couldn't find the teachers. <laughs> we didn't meet for three months, you know, and, and it just got lost. I could, um, I could contact the same teachers at Frontier again. Is this, are you, you're shaking your head. You don't I don't know. Really that always seems, that it, it seems to be a go-to solution around here. For example, right, Susan, didn't they have a logo contest at one point for the- Yeah, and we had the, two kids and- you know, I know, we'll get a student it. to do it. You know, I don't think, yeah. I'm not sure that's always super successful. Plus you're getting a 17 year old, you know, unless- right. I Students are supposed to be cheap. I think that's the major attraction. It's cheap, and it sounds like a good idea. And and this like kind of this this antiquated. All oh, those kids, they all know how to use the computer. Let's get one of them. Well, um, there's a difference between a kid who's a junior at MIT in the design lab, and you know, and a oh, sophomore there's, there's, at Frontier. Is there one right? of those at Frontier High School? No, 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 no. I just to just to. I, I mean, I'm. I'm I, I understand the point you're making. Right, right, right. <laughs> are, are we basically just talking about having a map with what they call hotspots on it and you click on one of those and you either get a text or a sound or an image? Is that what we're talking about? Well, that's as far as my feeble imagination has roamed. What because else I don't. <laughs> I think probably the Historical Society uses WordPress. Um, I think with a little Googling, it shouldn't be too terribly difficult. And WordPress is not that hard. It's pretty widely available and mostly free. You do have to buy a domain, but that's... It well, it's not free, let me tell you, no. Well, what do you use WordPress for? WordPress is the provides editing capabilities for web pages, storing, editing. It's a okay. it's a package. It's a software. Right, I understand. It's software. And it's it's used enough so that so far I've been able to just Google when I have a question of what I want to do and find something something that tells me you know sometimes right. rather Some, than yeah. rather than taking a course which is what of course i ought to be doing but, I mean, um, the equivalent of some guy has made a youtube about how to fix my washing machine yeah yeah, yeah. um those guys are great but <laughs> i don't mean to wikipedia says that wordpress is free and open source Right, but I'm not sure WordPress alone is going to let you create this map. It, it, the WordPress is the is the management system, but you right. need to get some either a plugin or an outside app that is part that, that becomes integrated into your site to make this map thing work. And it sounds simple. I'm listening. Yeah. So. I think on the architecture, we have two choices. One of us has to say, I will figure this out, the architecture, or we have to find someone else who will figure it out. Um, I, I'm not gonna figure, I don't know enough. It would, I'm not uh, qualified to do that, I don't think. I know enough. Uh -huh. to I'll spend enough what, Alan? I know enough to get myself in trouble, but um, <laughs> that. But I use. Yeah, I used to be I able to know how computer. to do this on the on the software I had for my own website, but that's that was front page. I can usually figure it out, but mostly making it accessible to a wider audience is more difficult and uh, harder to figure out. Did you all have ideas for outside help that, you know, if you had a magic wand, you'd, you'd know? No. I, there's, I a woman, think... there's a woman who's working on an interactive map for PVMA. Her name's Juliet Jacobson, and she's in Ashfield, I think. 
um, who I know who I know from other other projects, other decades. Um, she's a very nice woman, and she might be willing to come to uh, one of our meetings just to talk to us about what what we're in up against. You know what what the challenges are here. That would be super. And if she um, if she does this soon, I have one hundred and twenty dollars that we haven't spent yet from this year's budget. To have her come to a meeting. Well, or to have her if it would be if it would be polite to say we have a very small budget, but we'd be happy to you know, probably offer hundred. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'd offer a hundred because one hundred and twenty would sound so odd, but but then we have to do this before June thirtieth. Um, well, she's in Ashfield. I can't imagine she can't make an hour to talk to us if we can set that up somehow. I I'd be happy would, to call her and, and chat her up. You know. I think that would be great. I think that would be great. I, okay. You can encumber it for another 30 or 60 days, I think. Um, as long as you have a commitment to spend it. Okay. But she might, I mean, we're talking about meeting with us by Zoom. So scheduling yeah. is not so much a, a big deal. Yeah. And Ashfield has a, a friend of mine who's a retired engineer from Boston has, um, Ashfield has great municipal free wireless. So she will connect really well because George put it in. But it's actually interesting for that entire town, which is, um, you know, spread out. Um, he doesn't know anything about websites, sadly. <laughs> no. So I think that would be great. I think that would be it because I think once we know what we're work, what structure we're working within, um, we can start just producing content. I was going to suggest, so you want to try to set that up for some time between now and the end of so it's yeah, let me. Let, I'll, see, I'll, I'll, give her, I'll give her a call and explain what we're doing and, and see what, how, what she thinks about how she might be helpful to us to at least get started or talk us out of it. I don't know, you know. Yeah. So and, 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 and practically speaking, just thinking if we, I think, I think because of the open meeting laws, if three or more of us were in a conversation with him, her, we'll have to host a meeting you know, okay. and make an open meeting. But two, I think two members of this committee could talk with her if that would, I don't know what, would that be, make sense? Or yeah, should you, we're, we're, you know, we're just exploring an option. We're talking about, talking about something. So right. I right. don't see what we're violating. Right. Um, okay, that would be great. Thanks. Or I'll see um, what I can find out. And then I was going to suggest, um, Alan, that since you and I have each done something, <laughs> yeah. mine less finished than yours, that maybe for the next meeting, we bring to this group what we would propose to post for our first projects, just to get a sense of scale and you know, language and visuals and, you know, what's going to work. Cause I think once yeah, we absolutely. see, you know, it's like, doing a, it's like doing a, a catalog for an exhibition. You have to know what the, you know, what your entries are going to look like before you start doing all the other entries. Um, okay. would, would that make sense? I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can do that. Okay. Anything else we should talk about about this now? Okay. Um, any other business? Um, in that case, so we're meeting earlier than we usually do because to discuss the information we don't have, but whatever. Um, <laughs> I am not here, I'm not in town on the third Monday in January because it is the day before my father's 90th birthday and we will be with him, my family. Well, I hope if my niece can find her vaccination record, but anyway, <laughs> that's the way it's going. Could, um, would it, you could meet without me if you wished <laughs> or could we meet on the 7th or the 14th instead? of the 21st? Uh, 
14th is the 250th meeting. Okay. All right. So it's the same thing. But with the seventh view. I mean, seven I mean you, it's the same conflict that you've that you uh, reminded us of the last time we met. Yeah, I mean, I think it would be always... good. Go ahead. If uh, it's only a week after the planning board meeting, well, a little more than, I guess it's two weeks, never mind. But still, no, it it's would be quick great. enough so that if we have issues with the elevations, Right. It wouldn't right. really hold anything up. Right. And and you know, I certainly don't want to hold up the merger of the water district yeah. with the water system. You know, we're already two years beyond the um, hoped for implementation date. Um, so we'll move to the seventh. Yeah. Um, so Allison, why don't you talk with um, Juliet Jacobson? Yeah. Okay. And if if she thinks she wants to talk with us, then you could give her the date and we'll, we can talk with her then. Are we saying the 14th? The 7th, the 7th, 7th. of June, if that's okay with okay. yeah. And in the meantime, try to, you know, ask her to send you a business card or letterhead or something. I, I'd like to find out from Lynn, I might actually need I'll check with Lynn to see what we would need to, as you said, Judy, encumber some money. I mean, I, I just think it's nice to offer something, you know, a stipend okay. to someone. I assume, you know, she does this for a living. I, yeah, right? no, she's a professional web designer. Yeah, so we'd be, we, I'm sure, I don't even want to get into what she charges. <laughs> you know, that's what we've got. Right. Okay. Um, okay. All right. Everybody Okay. Is this good? I think so. Um, All right, thank you. Uh, oh gosh, it's 10 after six. So I, um, I'll write to Wayne and the boys tomorrow morning and let me know what you think, okay?